Welcome, friends, to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, and we welcome you to this time where we can join together to grow closer in love of God and neighbor. Take a deep breath, breathing in God's presence, breathing out the concerns of the day, that we may know God is with us, that we may come to the cross, lay our burdens down, and be raised up to new and eternal life, now and always. Hear the affirmation in our petition. There he found a man named Aeneas, who had been bedridden for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. And immediately he got up. And all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. While Peter was kept in prison, the church prayed fervently to God for him. Peter, bound with two chains, was sleeping between two soldiers while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly! And chains fell off his wrists. Our theme this week has been audacious prayer, perfect response. And I hope your prayers have been audacious this week. We read again from Soul Feast by Marjorie J. Thompson. It takes practice to learn, not to censor our prayer. But trying to keep secrets from God is like a three-year-old who covers his eyes and declares, You can't see me! God sees into our hearts more clearly than we do. Indeed, God is the one who prompts us to look at what we have swept under the rug of our repressions and rationalizations. The Spirit awakens us to what lies hidden within sometimes gently, sometimes with a jolt, but always so God can work with our conscious consent to free us for growth. I like that uh, reflection because audacious prayer is prayer that is truly open to change. And when we are so right, when we are not wrong, when this is the way it is, my way or the highway, the Bible says it, I believe it, that settles it. I've heard that said. You're not open to change. You're not open to growth. You're not open to interpretation. You're not open to what God, what else God may have in store for you. And that's again going to this idea of humility. Are you clay that can be molded? Or are you ready hardened in the fires of the kiln? Unbreakable. Unmovable. In your position, in your rationalizations, in your justifications. I like this analogy of, 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 you know, uh, parenting and and the little kids because... Children think they can get away with things pretty easily. And, you know, who who ate all the Cheetos? Not me, covered in cheese dust, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm not Sherlock Holmes, but I put two and two together. And I think we think the same thing. We think we can... Get one over on God. And again, I, God's not like waiting to get you. And and as a parent, I'm not waiting to get my kids like, oh, I'm going to get you. I, like, I just, I just want the truth. Like that, that's what I, I we, we try. I mean, Jennifer and I, we try to teach our kids. We just want the truth. We just want to know what happened so that we can talk about it, so that we can grow from it. We can learn from it. We can help if there needs to be, if, if you need help, if, if, like, we just want to know what happened. We want the truth. 
and and the people who lie to themselves i mean we as adults we lie to ourselves on a regular basis and then it becomes a justification and then we back it up with our faith our our political agenda our whatever it is we 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 find ways to justify our bad behavior or our position or what we believe versus what someone else believes and maybe being right's just not that important in fact i actually think that that's a really good that's a good position maybe being right's not that important maybe if we were all just a little more wrong we'd all be able to be with each other in a lot better place Maybe if we were just a little bit more open, a, a little bit more honest. Because, yeah, God, God knows. God knows. And again, it's not like, so God's coming to get you. God knows. And God wants to help you. God loves you. God cares about you. God became one of us and dwelt among us so that we could have life and have it in its fullness. But you got to fess up. You ate the Cheetos. You got to admit, no, maybe I can't do it myself. Maybe I do need help. That's another good analogy when it comes to parenting. That's a good, sounds like a good sermon series. <laughs> Things we all know as parents that we don't seem to figure out as adults, right? <laughs> no, I can't do it myself. Our scripture reading today comes from, or uh, yeah, that was our thing. Our scripture reading today comes from 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 11. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be blessed. He is the compassionate Father and God of all comfort. He's the one who comforts us in our trouble so that we can comfort other people who are in every kind of trouble. We offer the same comfort that we ourselves receive from God. That is because we receive so much comfort through Christ in the same way that we share so many of Christ's sufferings. So if we have trouble, it is to bring you comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is to bring you comfort from the experience of endurance while you go through the same sufferings that we also suffer. Our hope for you is certain because we know that you are partners in suffering, so you also are partners in comfort. Brothers and sisters, we don't want you to be unaware of the troubles that we went through in Asia. We were weighed down with a load of suffering that was so far beyond our strength that we were afraid we might not survive. It certainly seemed to us as if we had gotten the death penalty. This is so that we would have confidence in God who raises the dead instead of ourselves. God rescues us from terrible death and he will rescue us. We have set our hope on him that so that he will rescue us again, since you are helping with your prayer for us. Then many people can thank God on our behalf for the gift that was given to us through the prayers of many people. I, I love this passage because Paul is, uh, is reminding the church in Corinth that You've been comforted. Go comfort other people. You've been saved. Offer salvation to other people. You have been through suffering. Walk with other people who are going through suffering. I mean, that's the, the response to audacious prayer. Lord, bring me comfort. And then you receive comfort. Go give it to other people. You receive healing. Offer that healing to other people. You receive love, offer that love to other people. I mean, that, that's a big part of what it means to be Christian. We receive, so we give. It's not we give, so we're saved. No, we have received freely, openly, unmerited, undeserved grace. And because of that, we can't help but to give it away. We can't help but to give it away. We don't store it in storehouses. We don't hide it. We don't bury it in the ground. We invest it. We give it away. And that's what prayer does. It, it calls us to just, just give and give and give. And I'm not just talking about our money, but I mean, most of us, that's something we need to be challenged with because a lot of us have a lot of things. Just with everything. We, we we need to give our experiences. I, you know, I love the church because 
you know, I, I've been diagnosed with, I, I, I have not, but you know, someone's been diagnosed with cancer, come to church and guess what? There's all kinds of people who have gone through it, who may be going through it right now, who may have lost someone who's gone through it or may have survived. We walk together. I'm going through a divorce. Guess what? Come to church. There's tons of divorced people. Hey, I just got married. Guess what? There's all kinds of married people. Some of whom have struggled. Some of whom have been that through that race. Hey, guess what? I'm having trouble with the kids. Welcome to the club. Here's what Christian parenting is, at least as best as I've lived it. Let's live it together. Let's do it together. Let's encourage each other. Man, that's what church should be. That that's I mean, that's my prayer that we would be one, this kind of community that isn't a social club, that that isn't a just a group of, you know, a a group of people doing things that they like to do or or, or a place to just hang out for an hour on Sunday. That that church is really a community that lives life together. The good times, the bad times and everything in between. That, yeah, we talk about politics. Yeah, we talk about our faith. Yeah, we talk about what we believe. But we do it in a way where we can grow together and we can say, hey, this is where I am right now. I may be wrong. I may change my mind tomorrow. Uh, what do you think? Let's work through it. Hey, this is what I'm going through. Have you gone through that? Hey, I know you're going through this. Guess what? I've gone through that too. Let me tell you my story and let me hear your story. And, and I'm going to be here with you. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not someone you're going to see for an hour a week or or or, or a, a sixty minute session. I'm here. We are siblings. Pray that prayer, and man, what the church could do, what we could do together, would be amazing. Friends, today we practice prayers of intercession, praying for others. And to do so, we use our simple five-finger prayer. And I'll put it on the screen for you so that in silence you can pray for those closest to you, those in authority, our leaders, those who are weak, and finally, and most importantly, yourself. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.